Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Herger, a field chief technologist for Vertica. And today I'd like to give you a brief uh, walkthrough of some of the interface and features of Vertica Accelerator. So, you know, first up, Vertica Accelerator is Vertica. A Vertica Accelerator is a database as a service or infrastructure as a service. Um, the first stage to installing Vertica Accelerator is running a cloud formation template to give to allow the Vertica control plane and UI to manage resources within your AWS account. So once you've installed the CFT, then you'll get access to this to this uh, user interface to create and manage your database clusters. So the first thing to do is create a new database. There's a wizard, which will allow you to select a region, select an availability zone, select an initial size of your cluster, which of course can be changed later. We'll start with a small one. Uh, select an initial EC2 instance type. Uh, again, can be changed later for uh, to, sc to scale up with your workloads. Uh, define an initial database name and user, and optionally set a CIDR block to limit act to limit network access to your database. So I've already created a quick start DB here. Yeah, so we had created, I created a, 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 a the base config, base, most basic configuration of three, three point two I three instances. Uh, this gives me a, a certain amount of compute power to to start working. Now, so Vertica is a SQL database, so we up front we're given a DNS where we can go and connect to the database. I configured a DB visualizer, a JDBC tool. You can specify the database server, and this gives us access to that three node cluster. Um, something that's already running um, is you, know, you can very quickly use that DNS and the initial credential to start adding data to the system, you know, whether it's copying data from tables. Uh, in this case, I'm, I've got a small streaming data where I've st streamed you know, several hundred million rows in as over the course of several demos. And we see that if we have access to schemas and tables, just as one might expect from a, a you know, an ANSI SQL compatible database. So we can load data into Vertica, but since we're operating in AWS and you probably have a lot of other resources in your data lake in the cloud, Parquet files, Orc files, you know, other streams, Kinesis and Kafka streams, we provide a tool where we can, we, we can attach to those tables, to those external data sources as tables and query them. So here I have a set of Parquet files in an AWS bucket. It's a TPC DS data set. Vertica provides some functions uh, called infer to infer table DDL. So I used an infer ta table DDL. It inspected the bucket, generated an external table DDL. And I can simply run this and create an external table, which will now be visible you know, within, my, within, my, within my data lake schema. So I have store sales, catalog sales, web sales that I've generated from buckets of data. And we can query those just like any other SQL ta any, any SQL table. And further, since it's all SQL and all visible as tables, you know, optionally in different schemas, we can perform federated queries across data that's been loaded into into the data into the database's data warehouse, as well as query data sources that reside out in your data lake in S3. And we also and and and, and perform you know federated queries to provide to to bring Vertica SQL to all of your data. So we can also query other resources such as you know, Spark, HDFS, anything out there that's in your cloud account. So it's an advantage of running in your cloud account. Account It takes advantage of all of the functionality available within Vertica. So jumping back, so we see that there's several other monitoring widgets that are visible within the UI. You know, a number of unique users. So I'm running all of my jobs as unique users. I have a few sessions running. You know, I have a streaming data load. I have the uh, DB visualizer I just showed. And in a moment, I'll show some Python. So you see total, total queries running. It gives an hour a view, a view of queries per hour. You know, Steve mentioned I was going to show some, view, some, some Python and ODBC integration. So among one of the other jobs I had running, actually, is uh, this is a quick view. We, we do provide native Python drivers and also a library called VerticaPy that provides direct access to Vertica functionality, both in SQL as well as wrapped as Python functions uh, and classes. So we did a little SQL magic here, available through Vertica Pi and using the Vertica Python native driver to do you know, counts of records per date uh, over, over a table. 
and provide a user interface that's available within my Jupyter Lab. We also provide other visualizations where we can extract data into a data frame from the table and, and show a histogram. It's fairly similar to the view above, um, but you're represented as a vertical bar chart. So Vertica also provides integrations to other Py other Python libraries, you know, you know, as well as um, TensorFlow, Spark. We also provide native drivers for Go um, and for Node.js and JavaScript. So you can also build web applications directly in frameworks like Angular and React. And we provide an extensive number of, of Jupyter Lab notebooks through our through our Vert through the Vertica website. Now jumping back to Accelerator again. So you're running in the cloud. So you know cloud resources, of course, you know run you know, oftentimes charge per hour. So we want to manage the um, the amount of resources that we're using. So we provide a widget here that allows us to for to control scheduled and automatic scaling as well as idle shutdown of the database. Now see, in addition to the base cluster that I've created here, subcluster here of three nodes, I have an additional up to six nodes that are available in another subcluster referenced by another DNS. So I can I can use this subcluster for two purposes within Accelerator. One, I could start the cluster and you know isolate workloads within this within this cluster, so they won't so the, the clusters won't crosstalk as Steve mentioned. Or I could simply spin up auto scale and bring these nodes online. So as as query workload ramps up, I can bring additional compute power on demand. Let's take a look here at what controls are available. We have for schedule based auto scaling. So if you know you're going to need those additional nodes at a specific time. We can schedule the, the, the subcluster to start and stop at a specific time. And this would allow you to run batch jobs overnight, for instance, or bring nodes in online when, when you know users are going to require additional compute resources. Alternately, we offer elastic auto scaling. This allows you to bring to bring the cluster online, to bring additional nodes online in response to, to the number of running number of running sessions. In this example, where I have two groups of nodes available, if the number of running sessions exceeds gets into the six, exceeds six, we'll start. We'll automatically start that additional operation subcluster, and those six nodes will be available as part of the DNS round robin um, under an autoscaler DNS to be available for to, to 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 scale up compute to match the amount of sessions. As the number of sessions decreases, as user logs off or or jobs complete, after a certain period of time. The additional nodes would 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 shut down, and then you'd no longer you'd no longer be charged for that compute capacity. In cases where you know that there's going to be where users are going to be you know offline, say overnight, over weekends, and you want to shut down automatically, you know, say for instance, when I stop this demo, after 15 minutes of of when no sessions are running, the database is idle for with no with no activity, it will shut down the database completely and will no longer be billed for those resources. So it provides a couple of mechanisms to manage to manage both the scale of workload as well as the uh, the, the the spend. We provide a few tools on on the on the on the on the left side. We provide a few tools to monitor the database activity. In this case showing query response time, queries and CPU utilization over time. In this case, this is just the last eight hours. But we can also zoom out and see what the weekly view is. We see that the database that this you know. Definitely specific times of day when the database is active and CPU and memory are being used. And we can also see queries per user. So if, you know, if, if multiple users are running, we can see who's, who, which users are using the resources. Looking at patterns like this in terms of query and CPU and memory utilization can inform you know, some of the scheduled and auto scaling operations as well as predict, help predict shutdown, uh, idle shutdown. And beyond that, since we're in the cloud here, we want to be able to monitor our, our per CPU per hour usage. We provide a simple usage summary dashboard. And we provide a, a, a metric as far as the monthly spend in terms of CPU hours. If we could look per, per database, since I've had a few databases running as well as within subclusters within a database and see the CPU hours. We can even jump in into the session logs and see exactly when nodes were started and stopped, you know, down to very fine details and provide reports on how many nodes were running, you know, exact number of hours, exact times. So beyond the charts, we can also provide something more predictable, something which you, you could be processed in, in, another, in, in other tools. 
Now you'll notice here that the only metric we keep track of is number of hours. And this is because Vertica does not charge on Vertica Accelerator, as in the database of service, does not charge for the number of the number of, of terabytes of data you use, does not charge for the number of users, does not charge for the number of queries. It's one flat charge. When the database is up, you're charged for the for per vCPU per hour as the database runs. No other no other metric is built. So this provides a very quick way to, you know, a, a single variable really to monitor as far as how much you're using and a single variable where you could use to predict going forward, you know, you know weekly or monthly consumption. So it provides a very straightforward billing model. And again, since this, since Vertica, the Vertica database of service is running within your account, you could take advantage of any credits or, enter, or EDP enterprise discount program that you may have available through, through Amazon for the instance types. Um, as well as S3 storage that are used by Vertic Accelerator. And so that's a quick overview of our Vertic Accelerator database as a service. And I'll hand it back to uh, Rohit, our CTO, to talk a bit more about how it works and, 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 and uh, deep dive into the uh, operations.